So uh, thank you everyone for joining. We have a few new people here, but it's all and it's always great to uh, get some new people involved. Um, as always, uh, these meetings are recorded. Um, we post them on YouTube for people who couldn't make it, so that they can they can keep up on things that are going on in Purple WRT. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm I'm Eric Schultz. I'm the community manager at uh, at Purple Foundation. Um, I particularly focus um, a little, I focus on, you know, kind of everything that Purple does, but I have a particular focus in the uh, Purple WRT area. Um, so I do some some development there as well. So um, that's kind of the, the summary of who I am. Um, we should probably do introductions. We kind of did them before, but it'd be good to do it, you know, kind of in the formal part of the call. So. Um, uh, the the folks who Michael and I'm I'm sorry I completely had forgotten your name you call, from also from Qualcomm you called in via um via phone um, would you like to do introductions kind of what what you're interested in and and uh, who you are and why you're here and things like that um, I can go first uh, this is Mike awesome. Green uh, I'm part of the regulatory group at Qualcomm and I've been involved with FCC issues and FCC software security issues. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just recently sort of learned about Purple and FCC pointed it mm -hmm. out to me. So I'm just trying to get up to speed. I had a little discussion with Chandana uh, mm -hmm. from Qualcomm. So she gave me the invite. Um, so um, I just wanted to call in and just sort of learn the lay of the land. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. There was uh, somebody else from Qualcomm. I'm sorry again. I, I I'm terrible with names. The the um the product manager and the open source drivers. Right, right. Uh, my name is Yifeng. Uh, Yifeng. Uh, I am uh, a software product manager uh, uh, in Qualcomm and mostly uh, involved in the uh, the uh, the connected home uh, business unit. Uh, 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 Mainly responsible for uh, for the open source uh, drivers, mm -hmm. and uh, I think I'm, I'm mostly interested in the uh, uh, this working group and what 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 is the uh, the charters of this uh, this uh, this uh, working group or forum and learn uh, kind of get some uh, informations uh, uh, from the team and uh, and maybe provide some uh, some some input uh, as well. Awesome. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Um, thank you. Uh, did, would uh, Hauke and uh, Paul, would you like to do introductions too, since uh, we have two new members? Uh, yes, I can start. Hi, I'm uh, Hauke Mertens. I'm working at uh, Intel in the Connected Home division, and I'm also uh, one of the core developers for um, the lead project and OpenWRT. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm Paul Blay. I work at Imagination Technologies in the MIPS division, um, and we're focusing on IoT and uh, currently working on our creator platform, which runs OpenWRT as well. Awesome. Thank you. Um, that, that's great. Uh, you had Ifong. You had you had mentioned you had asked the question about what the what the charter of the group is. Um, the charter, I don't remember it offhand. Uh, it, it's focused on, on adding um, features that are um, kind of carrier grade features to OpenWRT, but it, it, it's also a, um, it's we're, we're kind of have a uh, broad mandate to just do what we can to help um, help members of, of Purple be involved in OpenWRT and improve Open WRT support over time, but also, um, you know, help uh, the Open WRT community grow and connections between the community and uh, and members of Purple. So it's kind of a uh, it's kind of broad, um, but we uh, we have kind of um, we generally deal with these few set of goals. Um, right now, in, in our agenda, and our agenda is almost the same every week. It's kind of the same kind of um, topics. That we focus on, um, so uh, I can talk a little bit about that as we go. Um, okay. Yeah, no problem. 
Uh, so the first thing is a board farm um, status uh, from everyone. Uh, I, for, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if you know uh, the folks at Qualcomm in particular that the uh, QCA had had created um, board farm, which is a, it's a Python uh, system for doing automated testing of um, OpenWRT boards, um, theoretically any Linux. Uh, boards, but you know, you, we uh, we actually do do test. Um, currently, we're testing two um, Qualcomm boards. Uh, we'd like to test. Uh, we have an, an additional one, the AP one forty three. Yes, that's the one. Uh, we I actually was trying to set that up this week. We had some some difficulties because uh, the way the board farm was written, it expected something um, in the U boot boot up that was different than what we expected. Uh, the reason we do this with board farm is because right now there isn't a whole lot of automated testing, especially public automated testing for um, for uh, OpenWRT or LEAD for that matter, um, to the best of my knowledge. Um, and additionally, we would like to over time um, improve this with additional boards and we publicly um, release the results. Um, so we, so there, I, sh I should, back up for a second there's the software the board farm software which which i contribute to and members of the community contribute to um and we also run an instance of board farm and we have currently um a couple boards um from qualcomm and we're going to be getting them from other members of purple um and we certainly love more boards from qualcomm and i'd, I'd love to talk a little bit more about about um if we can um on getting those um, probably with Efong would be the appropriate person or somewhere in that area. Um, to uh, we're going to publicly test them. We run daily tests on these with uh, with daily builds of uh, OpenWRT. Um, Pauki's talked about adding lead builds, which is certainly something we can do. Over time, we want to allow people who are members of the community to log in remotely to run tests, particularly. Um, in cases that are, you know, trusted members of the community, people that may be um, involved in maintaining the support for a particular board or um, have a particular interest in why, say, their piece of software doesn't run um, on a board for some reason. Um, so we're also increasing tests over time. Uh, Paul has also talked a little bit about we, the idea of having a purple stamp. Um, we've, we've talked a little bit about having kind of um, Verification of features. Um, someone could, a, a company could provide a board to to add to our board farm instance, um, and say it runs. Uh, I don't know. We'll say AC Wi-Fi or something, or or one gigahertz, one gigabit Ethernet. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, we would have we would verify that publicly that it continues to do that and that it does do that, and and people kind of have a um, a stamp or something they could sell to or you know show to customers whether they be end users or other companies to say okay no it really does this we're not just saying this oh there's a there's a, a neutral a relatively neutral party that that agrees with this and they test it every day um, so it's kind of a it's kind of a, a cool project in that that respect um, we uh, the so I can just give my update. Uh, we had that problem this week with the AP143 board. Um, it expects something different f to break into U-boot than um, what we had expected. Um, so I talked with Mike, who is currently at Qualcomm. Um, I'm not uh, Mike Anderson. I'm not exactly sure what he works in Austin. I'm not exactly sure what his what his position is. Um, he's a developer. He he was one of the creators of Board Farm, and also Matt McClintock, who is uh, he's used to be at Qualcomm. He's now um, I'm not really sure what he's doing, but he's he's volunteering on the side, and he's uh, he is uh, also given some feedback about how we can how we can make this work in a more general fashion. Uh, so we're still trying to get that worked out. Um, we. I'm also having some problems with the DB120. I, I I think it's actually probably on my end. The the builds are look um, they're not including a a modification that I needed to run the tests. So I'm still investigating that. Um, that was a lot of talking on my part. Um, any uh, any questions about Board Farm or anyone else doing anything with Board Farm that they'd like to share?
Uh, uh, the seafoam art. Yeah. The, the the board you're talking about is mostly a um, myth based platform. I I sorry for my uh, ignorance here. The uh the the purple foundation is mostly uh, related to myths platform. Is that right? That that. Uh, well, yes and no. Um, I formally, I mean, we are very much related to MIPS. Our our main, our original founding sponsor was it was and is uh, Imagination Technology. So obviously they have a strong interest in MIPS, and our mission does include that we, you know, have a particular uh, a little bit of um. I don't know. Preference isn't the right word. We we take into consideration MIPS when we make decisions, but we are a um architecture agnostic company we we would i mean if you for example if qualcomm had an, an arm board that they wanted to test or or a member or anybody in the community really had an arm board that we want to test we would want that we would i mean that is important and that and it's important to our members and it's important to the community to know that those things work um so a lot of the projects we we work on don't really they they don't really focus on mips um some do some don't it kind of varies so, um, okay. it, 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 so yes, we kind of have a MIPS focus, but it's not a, it's not a hard MIPS focus by any mean. Um, and we certainly would focus on any topic that is of interest to members. And as Qualcomm's a member, if it's whatever the issue, we're certainly welcome to, to uh, take it into consideration as a, as a community and, and work on it. Okay, I got it. Awesome. Uh, any other questions anyone has on board farm or thoughts on board farm or any other topic, really? Okay, awesome. Um, so we can move on to the next topic: uh, funding open WRT projects. Um, for you know, for Efong and and for and for Michael, we we've been uh, we started trying to fund more open WRT projects, um, and uh, because these you know these are important things to get done in the community, um, and uh, this is a uh, it's kind of early, but we're st we're uh, we're starting to ramp up and then we're starting to make some progress. Uh, we had we'd approved the two projects for the um, that two members of the, of the community had done for our. Um, setting scheduling on Wi-Fi and also setting scheduling on internet access. Um, they wanted to add the feature to OpenWRT. That's not something that currently existed. Um, this is pretty common on, um, on like end user board or end user um, router software, but there isn't a package in OpenWRT for either of those things. So we had approved funding those projects. Uh, the agreements were signed by the, by the, um, by the two developers who had who are going to do that they're pretty small projects but they have approved and they're going to they kind of have a schedule on when they're expecting to get them done um one of them is going to be done towards is expected to be the middle of september the other one they had some extra they had other work they had to focus on as well so they said they were going to it was going to take a few more months than that but it's not a big deal um the big the big project that we are we are looking to fund and we're in the process of funding is the TR069 work. Um, this is in collaboration with a number of members of Purple, which is the um, including uh, ADB, um, Intel, um, Soft at Home, um, and a number of other ones. Uh, the the plan for that is uh, Luca and Luca Perkov, who is a you know core member of the OpenWRT team, and Felix Fietkow, who's a core member of the OpenWRT and lead teams. Um, they are going to, um, they've submitted their proposals to uh, uh, Purple. Um, we had to get, we have to get approval from Art, who is our, our president, from um, from Kathy, who is the chair of this, of this group, and she, apparently she couldn't be here today, and uh, David Lau, who's the chair of the technical steering committee at Purple. Um, they're just reviewing the proposals, giving some feedback to kind of um, just get some clarifications. And those I assume will be approved very soon. Um, I would say in the next week. And then that will start. Um, those discussions on what exactly is gonna happen and how those are gonna go about, um, those are happening in, we have a base camp available. 
Um, and if you are interested in, in that, we can we can talk. Um, I can add you to that. That's kind of private because uh, there's going to be some sharing of how um, some of the comp members of Purple are interacting with the, the TR-069 um, work that they do now because um, there's going to be a, uh, uh, a migration path for the work that, uh, that Luca and Felix are doing. Uh, so they kind of have to keep some of that stuff secret um, until they are ready to release it. So um, that's for now, that's where the discussions are going to happen. Um, eventually, obviously, the results and the important discussions are going to be all public because that's you know vital to uh, to actually being added to OpenWRT. Um, I, I'm not sure if if, if if all of you are aware of what TR069 is, but it's a um, a uh, a management protocol for uh, that carriers generally use for um, managing devices that they they own um, includes things like you know updating and um, updating software provisioning of services uh, a set of things it's it's um, it's a standard that's promoted by uh, it's it's a it's a standard organization I the, the, it isn't coming to mind what exactly which one is. Um, but, uh, so that's kind of generally, uh, what we're doing related to that. Are there any questions on that? All right. Um, regulatory update. Uh, this is, we, we often talk about this every week. Um, the TP-Link settlement with the FCC is probably the most notable thing this week, uh, certainly most notable. Um, I can kind of give a summary on what happened and, and what exactly the settlement was for those who are not aware. Um, I, I uh, actually do, I'm involved in this a little bit more outside of my purple work um, as an individual, but I, I um, did a little bit of this also when I was at, um, when I was uh, focusing on it at purple as well. So it's kind of a, a mix of, of things I work on. Uh, TP-Link had allowed people to change their country code in their built-in um, web UI. Uh, that is a violation of the FCC's rules to not allow modification of the of the of radio parameters um, in ways that would that would not be acceptable in the U.S. Um, related to the they call it the it's basically related to Wi-Fi security um, rules. So as part of TP-Link's settlement with the FCC to handle this, they agreed to pay a, a fine and um, they also uh, agreed to uh, work with the open, uh, the open source community. Um, I, I don't want to, uh, uh, I don't want to say exactly how it's going to turn out because um, uh, the agreement is a little bit uh, unclear on how it has to, this this uh, agreement has to work in practice. Um, so uh, it, generally, I would say it's not as big a change as a lot of people thought it was. Um, but it is it's an interesting topic related to the FCC's concerns related to software um, to uh, the Wi-Fi security. Um, I'm not really sure it has a big effect on how, um, say, the uh, OpenWRT folks, particularly their ability to access um, the core parts of the radio firmware um, and their uh, abilities to do that. I don't really think the settlement has much um, effect on that per se, but that's just kind of my personal analysis. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's just kind of my my uh, two cents on that. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how TP-Link complies with actually doing this. Um, and Purple has had a dialogue with the FCC. Um, they've they they actually reached out to us and wanted to talk um, to try to get uh, some people together, um, particularly from the open source community, um, to talk about some of the concerns that the open source community had. 
Um, they're still working through what process that's going to be. So um, we'll see if there's, you know, art is primarily focusing on that right now. So uh, any questions about that? All right. Well, um, Eric. Yep. It's a little bit side. So, so in in general, so what you're talking with the um, FCC and uh, 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 I think there's, it would be nice to send a, have you sent a mail to the Battle Mesh mailing list or something like this. Mm -hmm. What you what you have talked and what what is the current status of. Uh, we're talking between Purple and the FCC, even if it has not happened so much, so just that something happen, sure. happens there. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm happy to do that. I mean, the, the honestly, the they, they set up a call with some members of Purple. We just kind of had an introductory call to just kind of see what they were talking about. Um, and the and the truth is they we've talked about having a meeting involving some of the particularly open WRT members like yourself and Felix and Imre and Luca and people like that. Um, but uh, they haven't. Uh, they've kind of said, yeah, we'll do that. We think that's a good idea at some point, but they haven't really agreed on on when they want to do it. Um, so, but yes, I, I will send that to the Battle Mush uh, list as well. Um, and we purple. Uh, specifically cannot um our membership agreements don't allow us to lobby the fcc so um if you have an opinion about how the how the fcc should handle this topic um i would encourage you to email or to to send them a um a message that through their docket system um and i can send that out again to to folks on how to actually go about doing that but i will also send that information to battle mesh yeah, I think you you already I saw yep. this mail from you. I think you already sent it to somewhere. I don't know. It's on some mailing list. I saw it. Yep. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yep. No problem. No problem. Uh, hi, Eric. Uh, this is Mike yep. Green. Sorry. I, hey there. I started to talk. I started to talk before, but I was on mute. <laughs> so I know I that problem. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Just to say, um, you know, Qualcomm was uh, surprised that FCC. Um, levied those fines to TP-Link, just uh, reiterated how serious FCC is about the software security issue. So, yep. you know, that's why why we're interested. And, you know, I'm curious to, at least um, in Purple Foundation, stay in the loop on, you know, discussions with FCC or any position or proposals. And, you know, then, you know, Qualcomm is, uh, hasn't figured out exactly how to you know, what our, if we have a position or a contribution or mm -hmm. a suggestion. So I'm just trying to find out what, um, get in the loop of at least what's going on with the regulatory part in particular. Definitely. Yeah, I can, I can, uh, uh, that's totally understandable. And I, I think you're probably in a similar position to a lot of people and the not exactly sure what the best course of action is um, and exactly yeah. how to, how to handle this. It's, you're not the first person to say this by any means, um, yeah. and uh, and it's been a pretty broad. Um, it's not just industry. Obviously, there's a lot of people who aren't exactly sure how this should how this should be better handled, or if there is a better way to handle it. So, yeah, definitely. Well, awesome. Well, we're glad to have you involved, and we'll we'll certainly going to keep keep you in the loop. It, um, and we'll uh, we can talk more. Um, also, uh, I would encourage uh, both you and Efong, if you are not on the uh, Purple WRT mailing list, um, I would encourage you to join that. Or, um, or if if you're not sure what that is, you can email me. I hope you have my email. It's yeah. eschultz at purplefoundation.org. I can I can help you get on that list or or whatnot. So, okay, um, thanks. We can we can talk more about this definitely. Okay. Okay. That's good. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Anything else you want to talk about regulatory? Uh, no, and unfortunately, I have to drop off for another call. Oh, oh. no problem. Oh, thanks a lot. That's okay. Thank you for joining. Okay, okay thanks. Bye-bye. Yep, no problem. Um, next topic is uh, OpenWRT Summit. Um, 
we uh, sent out the RFP last week. Um, I spelled week wrong in my slides, it looks like. Um, but uh, we did send it out last week. Um, we uh, have a uh, website at openwrtsummit.org. Um, encourage people, if they have any topics related to OpenWRT, LEAD, anything else related to the community in any way, um, and OpenWRT in the you know, the ecosystem around OpenWRT, I would encourage you to submit a proposal for a talk. Excuse me. Um, those are due, uh, those proposals are due on August 19th. Um, and there's information at openwrtsummit.org to, to submit a proposal. Um, if for those who don't have, um, uh, you know, per, they need funding to get there, say their company won't cover it or they don't have a company that would cover it, uh, Purple is able to provide some limited funding for that um, because we, we want to have the best, um, the best results uh, and the best proposals here. Um, this is this for those of you who were I think were there last year. It was a it was a really good, um, really good talk, uh, really good uh, summit. It went very well. We had about eighty some people there. Um, I don't think we're going to have any issue with getting that this year, but um, it'll be interesting to see uh, what proposals we get. So I I certainly encourage everyone to uh, submit their proposals as soon as possible. Um, I don't think there are any other topics related to OpenWRT Summit this week other than uh, please send your proposals um, or sh or share it with uh, people that you think should send proposals. I would encourage people if they they know of a person who they who has a topic they think would be really interesting or a person who has um, a unique perspective on OpenWRT or lead to to please uh, submit a proposal. Uh, hi, Eric. Uh, this is yep. Alcus. Um, yep. I thought about something um, so that we, I don't know how, what what format uh, this could be at the um, summit, but something to bring um, to make it easier that we yeah we interest and we the problems for uh, what the industry sees with OpenWRT and so on what we want to, to change or something like this mm -hmm. or probably or not really understand it or something like this, and also from the community with what the community wants from the industry that you that somehow. Able to bring together these both opinions, what they want. I don't know if if, if, it, if it talk or a panel or whatever is the right mm -hmm. thing, or if it's at all the right thing to do it in this um, this audience. Uh, at least that that came to my mind um, as something. Yeah, at least I, I see that there are some problems from what what the industry expects there and what the community expects there and um, what the other side knows about the yeah more or less the other yeah. One yeah. side knows about the other side and so on. Okay, I I absolutely agree with you. I think this is a this is a perfect place to do this. This is a, it's an, like an it's an ongoing topic that seems to have come up um, a number of times. So I would certainly I think that's a great example. I'm not exactly sure the right format either, um, but uh, we should we could talk about that either on the Open WRT list or the Summit Committee list and kind of talk about that. Okay. So certainly that that's a good that's a good topic certainly. Yeah, I can write the mail to the uh, um, summit list and yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For those of you who don't know, Hauke and Paul and myself are on the uh, the summit committee. Um, we have a it's a committee of people who are involved in OpenWRT and lead and uh, uh, sp or spoke at the summit last year and interested parties to um, who are reviewing the proposals. So it's very much a uh, a community uh, run event. Um, so, yeah. All right. Um, anything else about OpenWT Summit that people want to want to talk about? All right. Wait, wait, oh. Sorry, when's that summit, uh, Eric? The summit is uh, October thirteenth in Berlin. I probably should have put that in the slides. Uh, it is co-located with um, the Embedded Linux Conference Europe and Open IoT Europe, um, which is sponsored by the Linux, or run by the Linux Foundation. We are, um, we're actually on the last day of those two events. It's, I think, a Thursday. 
I I would have to have to check that. Um, uh, I see. Yeah. That's August thirteenth. It's uh, two weeks. It's probably a little bit less than two Oct weeks from now. October thirteenth. Oh, October thirteenth. Okay. October thirteenth. Yes. The uh, the um, proposal submissions have to be done by uh, August nineteenth, but the event is October thirteenth. Um, pretty sure on that. Uh, so okay. that is. Oh, uh, just just a, a, a quick uh, a quick question on the uh, earlier uh, uh, the TR69 uh, yep. uh, project that uh, that you're going to fund uh, fund fund uh, very soon. Uh, the what kind of a uh, license uh, are we looking at? Uh, you know, the Purple Foundation is looking at uh, uh, for this uh, for this project. Uh, um, Purple in general uh, uses the ISC license, which is uh, an extremely permissive open source license um, that is actually um, it's kind of it's kind of our preference by our bylaws actually um, and that was uh, one of the members I, I'm not sure why at, in the beginning decided that um, that was a it was important to them um, we do occasionally if in some certain cases do allow uh, less permissive licenses uh, more but that is probably unlikely for this project um you know the if for example the um one of the projects that were uh dealing with the uh the scheduling of wi-fi access turning on and off the wi-fi um that's a pretty small project if they had to include some gpl code we would probably accept that um we'd have to get approval but uh, on this project, considering the size and the um, interest of the industry, I think that's probably unlikely. That would it would probably be under the ISC license. I see. So yeah, well, no, I'm, I'm familiar with ISC, ISC license. So yeah. Okay. Yep. Extremely permissive. Um, right. All right. Anything else that folks want to talk about? Yes, is Qualcomm involved in this TR69 stuff done by Purple? Um, to date, I don't believe they have. No, um, I could be wrong on that. I don't remember anyone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'd certainly welcome their participation in this. Definitely. Okay. Uh, what, what kind of timeline are we looking at this TR69? The uh, uh, the Purple Foundation looking at uh, uh, um, the work that's being done. I mean, I think it's going to be an ongoing project. It's a, the the proposal that came up with. Uh, we had a meeting in Paris at Soft at Home's headquarters. It's a fairly ambitious project. I think it's going to be over time. Um, I, I don't have a kind of a, a a real kind of timeline of how you know a hard timeline. I would have to think by the end of the year we would have. Um, at least some, um, the first, uh, s the first part of it out, um, probably sooner than that. It depends on when the, um, agreements are signed. And, uh, as part of that, Felix, um, he's developing an API that works with what it already exists for a lot of the companies. So depending on how long the company, he's going to like, talk to the companies they're going to then give feedback on what they think of the api so depending on how long it takes to get that agreement um and it may be longer or shorter um oh sure it's a little bit of it's a little bit up in the air in that part because there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of people involved in it obviously but um i i would be surprised if there wasn't if there wasn't at least the initial part out at the end of the year by the end of the year. And there's certainly going to be, it's going to be a, um, a long-term project because there's a lot of parts that, that were, that the uh, members particularly wanted and everybody agreed were very valuable to the project going forward. Right. Now the, uh, who, who are the uh, participation companies at this stage? Uh, On the tier 069? Right. Um, the, the ones, the ones that have said they 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 that were at the um, 
at the meeting and are particularly interested were um, Soft at Home, ADB, um, Intel. Uh, also, um, Technicolor was invited. They're not a member of Purple, but they they've been um, they've been very interested and they they were they were invited and were there. Um, and there have been a few um, um, non-members of Purple who are also interested. There are some people from. Uh, they're primarily people who are involved in the tier 069 standard itself. Uh, they were interested in that. So those are kind of the members that are are kind of the um, driving force. But um, if there are other members going forward, they're certainly welcome to be involved. Okay. Definitely. All right. Um, any other uh, questions or comments that folks have? Just uh, a little reminder at the bottom, the Carrier Interest Group meeting is on August 23rd. Um, that is coming up. So in, well, I guess it's quite a few weeks, uh, three weeks or so, but. Um, all right. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up, are, are there any topics or presentations we think would be really valuable for these meetings? I want to make sure that they're valuable for everybody involved and uh, we, can, we can get uh, as much participation as possible. So um, I don't want to be uh, the only one talking at these meetings or anything like that and or not be covering interesting issues. So um, it, any suggestions for people on topics we should be covering in the in the future? All right. Well, I'll let everyone think on that. Um, if they have suggestions, I would encourage that you to uh, to uh, uh, email or email us or, or let me know. Um, one other thing we had talked about, um, I had asked to see if we wanted to have kind of a, a regular board farm meeting uh, to talk about board farm itself. Um, and Paul had brought that up and, you know, what, what, whether we think that's valuable. Uh, didn't get a lot of feedback. I mean, a lot of people, there's a lot of people that use board farm. I would say, I mean, there's something like 20 forks on, on GitHub, which is considering this, it's a little bit specialized. That's not a small amount. Um, I'm. I would like to have the meeting, but it, I mean, it, it's really dependent upon whether we have enough people that are really interested in that. So. Yeah. Um, did you say you did or didn't get a lot of feedback? I got very little feedback. I would right. Think. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I think it, it needs. It needs. I mean, I'd be happy to join that, because I mean, I would probably replace that with this. Well, the other way around, uh, because that's the key interest for me in mm -hmm. these meetings. So, yeah. I mean, I have a team, and also they're focusing on it for a couple of weeks now. But there's probably no benefit unless there's other people looking at it actively yeah. as well. Definitely. Yeah. So perhaps we don't have the right people on this particular call, but um, <clears throat> who do you think would be? most interested in that um I, you know it it's i think the there's the folks from um certainly the people from qca um like mm. mike um and matt who's he's not at qca anymore he'd certainly be interested in it um probably uh there's that gentleman from um uh uh, tourists or the the tour from the tourist Omnia project. Mm. They probably he'd probably be interested. In it. He's a committer, um, but it, it really comes down to can we actually get people to come to a meeting? Um, that's how yeah. it's called. Um, cause well, I, I guess it, it it could be a case of well, do they come to this one for just the board farm subject like I do? Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. that it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, definitely that makes sense. And maybe it can just be half an hour or something you know to to raise issues i think as long as we have i think probably maybe the first thing to think about is what do we actually want to achieve from those meetings 
if yes. you can say, you know, in three lines, okay, we want to understand, I don't know, race issues or um, I haven't really had any time to think about it, but if there was some objectives which people could understand and they would stick to those, maybe that definitely. would be more of a, a drive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think the, the things that were, I viewed it as valuable if we did have it were the um, topics of um, dealing with, you know, what issues are in, in the issue tracker, if they're new or, or whatnot. Oh yeah. Are okay. they, are, make sure they're reviewed. Are they assigned to someone if someone's willing to take them? Um, potential feature requests. I mean, there's, there's topics that need to be discussed that would be valuable to have a, you know, a little bit of broader discussion. Mm -hmm. um, it could be simply that people aren't interested in that. And that's why we're not getting a lot of discussion on them, but it's also possible that people are just not focusing on that because, you know, they have a lot of things and mm -hmm. reading would, would help them focus on that. And the other things that might be valuable, I think is actually just a time for people to talk about what problems they're having. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, board farm, you know, it's it's gotten easier over the last six months or so, I think, on getting it set up. But it's it still can be a little quirky. Um, mm -hmm. And what are the problems people are having, and can we help people fix them? So, so let's maybe come up with a few lines like that, and then just ping again and see if anybody, because if people find the meeting interesting uh, and useful to them, then obviously they'll they'll Definitely. turn up. And, and my entire thinking with that would be um, in doing the meeting would be we would do the purple WRT meeting for like, say, ha like half an hour and then board farm for another half an hour would be, you know, all yeah. one call, basically, I think would mm -hmm. make sense. So, um, so you don't have to find like a wildly different time of people's schedule. Or... <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, I, th I think I'll ping people again and a little bit uh, clearer as to what we're going to do. So what my ideas are. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Any other topics that people want to talk about right now? Not for me. Awesome. Well, um, I guess uh, we will uh, call it a meeting then. And uh, thank you everyone for coming. We really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I will, uh, we'll talk to you later. Cheers. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye.